From 1953 to 1955, the 3rd Avenue L in Manhattan comprised only the portion north of Chatham Square, since the South Ferry Branch and the City Hall Branch had previously been discontinued and removed. Here we are at Chatham Square on what remained of the South Ferry Branch. You can see how the whole branch had been truncated just at the south end of the uh, Chatham Square Station. The 3rd Avenue L used the upper level of the Chatham Square Station, since the lower level had been used by 2nd Avenue L trains, which were discontinued in 1942. A full schedule was operated right to the last day of service. Local trains, local express trains, and express trains. Here you can see the stubs that show where the City Hall branch had been removed. This was closed at the end of 1953 and removed during 1954. From the top of a building, we're looking at a northbound local or local express leaving Chatham Square Station. Since the 3rd Avenue L had no downtown yard, a good deal of deadhead operation was required in both rush hours. Uh, this involved using the re three remaining tracks of the South Ferry, of the City Hall branch, rather, as layup tracks. From the 2nd Avenue L level of the uh, Chatham Square Station, we're looking at a southbound 3rd Avenue train approaching the upper level. Here's all the bus activity on Park Row at Chatham Square with the 3rd Avenue L in the background. The upper level of the Chatham Square Station on the South Ferry Branch is all that remains in service. Some locals and express trains originated at Canal Street in the middle track instead of at Chatham Square uh, in order not to overcrowd the capacity of the Chatham Square Station. Notice the rather flimsy looking bumpers which were installed at the south end of the Chatham Square Station at the upper level. They don't look very substantial considering where they are. Wooden bodied elevated cars inherited from the Manhattan Railway continued to furnish most of the service in five car trains. Wooden and steel Q type cars which came from Brooklyn were used in through express service in six car trains. A northbound local leaving Chatham Square heading northbound and a southbound local or possibly local express coming into Chatham Square from Canal Street. The bumper at the south end of one of the tracks of the upper level of the Chatham Square Station. That is the portion on the remains of the South Ferry Branch, the Chatham Square Station on the City Hall Branch having been removed with that branch early in 1954. From the Manhattan Bridge area at Canal Street, we look southwestward toward the Chatham Square Station with a southbound local heading to the left and a northbound local or local express heading to the right in the foreground from the upper level of the Chatham Square Station. Now from Canal Street, middle track, we look south at the uh, switches where the South Ferry and City Hall branches formerly uh, divided. The three tracks which remained on the lower level and went to the City Hall branch were left in place for a while and used for layup trains. This train has come from Chatham Square down the ramp to Canal Street and is evidently a local express since it's coming into the middle track here at the south end of Canal Street. Looking northward from Canal Street we see a downtown local 
or local express. The local express is operated uh, as locals in the uh, direction of lighter traffic during each rush hour. In the northbound direction, some of the locals went only as far as Tremont Avenue and then were laid up in the middle track north of Tremont Avenue. Some other locals and local expresses went only as far north as Fordham Road and then were laid up in the middle track uh, from uh, uh, north of Fordham Road all the way up to Williamsbridge at uh, the Gun Hill Road area. Third Avenue through expresses were usually of Q-type cars, although there were occasional through expresses of Manhattan L cars as well. This is a train of Q-type cars from Brooklyn, which had been brought here and modified for IRT service in 1950, replacing the old trains of composite subway cars. There's a local express going as far north only as Fordham Road. It will then be laid up in the middle track on Webster Avenue north of Fordham Road. The through expresses were usually laid up between 204th Street and Gun Hill Road on the middle track. They operated in service to Gun Hill Road and were then deadheaded into layup on the middle track south of Gun Hill Road. Since the 99th Street Yard and the 179th Street Yard had already been closed by this time, any trains going to yards had to go up to the 239th Street Yard on the White Plains Road line, to which the 3rd Avenue L tracks were still connected north of Gun Hill Road. Houston Street was the next station north of Canal, This too was an express station, as was Grand Street, the next station beyond that. Canal, Houston, and Grand Streets were all on the Bowery. Here's a northbound through express of Q-type cars approaching the middle track at Houston Street Station. The Q-type cars had multiple unit door control, so one conductor could control all the doors in the train, unlike the composite cars in which a conductor was needed between every pair of cars to operate the doors. Looking north from Grand Street Station, that through express is heading up toward Cooper Union, the building in the center background, at uh, 6th Street, where the 3rd uh, Avenue L turns off onto 3rd Avenue. The Bowery continues north slightly to the left and becomes 4th Avenue. We pass a southbound local as we turn at 6th Street from the Bowery and into 3rd Avenue and go up the ramp to the 9th Street Station which was a double-deck express station. The 3rd Avenue L was well known for the double-deck express stations which had been added in the 1916 rebuilding when a through express track was finally completed uh, for the whole length of the 3rd Avenue L. Looking south from the 9th Street Station, that's a northbound probably local express express 14th street station was a local station on the 3rd avenue l so was 18th street and uh, the next express station was 23rd street which we are approaching here On the 2nd Avenue L, 14th Street was the express station and 23rd Street was the local station. 
just the opposite of the 3rd Avenue L uh, arrangement. 28th Street was a local station. So was 34th Street, which we are approaching now. The footbridge immediately identifies the 34th Street station. Until 1930, there was an elevated shuttle on 34th Street from 3rd Avenue over to the Long Island Railroad Ferry at the East River. Even though that had been discontinued and the L structure removed, the footbridge, which allowed access to and from the southbound platform from the L shuttle, uh, remained in place right down to the very last day. Looking northward, we see the Chrysler Building at 42nd Street and Lexington Avenue. Standing on the footbridge at the 34th Street Station, looking southward, we see the switches south of 34th Street, a northbound through express of Type Q cars, and this time a northbound local express of Manhattan L cars. Looking down from the footbridge at the northbound platform of the 34th Street Station as an uptown local makes its stop and then proceeds northward. The lettering on the letterboard of most cars read New York City Transit System. These cars had been uh, re-varnished or repainted and then lettered uh, New York City Transit System in 1940 or 41 after the uh, IRT and BMT were unified under the Board of Transportation. The lettering had previously read Interborough from the name of the Interborough Rapid Transit Company. Here's a southbound train of Q cars deadheading on the local track down to Chatham Square or Canal Street where it will become a northbound through express. The Q cars were not allowed to carry passengers on the local tracks of the Manhattan portion of the 3rd Avenue L due to weight restrictions. Consequently, they had to uh, deadhead downtown for the evening rush hour and operate northbound of the middle track, which uh, was of heavier duty construction uh, due to the 1916 rebuilding. On the middle track, they were allowed to carry passengers, not on the local tracks. There's a northbound through express of Q-type cars passing beneath the footbridge at 34th Street. And now we're riding a northbound express through 34th Street and up to the 42nd Street station which was a double-deck express station. Up the ramp and into the upper level of the 42nd Street Express Station. Some views from nearby buildings. This is looking northwestward at the 42nd Street Station. We can see both levels here with the southbound local at the left on the downtown local track. And from the 47th Street Station which was a local station. We see a northbound through express coming down the ramp from 42nd Street and heading northbound. Its next stop will be the next express station, which was 106th Street. So the 3rd Avenue L offered a very good, very good high-speed express service, non-stop from 42nd Street to 106th. Another northbound express, probably a local express this time, coming down the ramp from the 42nd Street Station and passing through 47th Street. 
Here's the 42nd Street station from the street level at 42nd Street, on 42nd Street itself. From the Tudor City area, we look west on 42nd Street toward the 3rd Avenue L station and some views underneath the L in the middle 1950s. From the footbridge at 34th Street again, looking northwestward toward the Chrysler Building. The roofing material on all open-air IRT stations was painted red on the elevated lines as well as on the elevated extensions of subway lines. This is riding the rear end of a southbound local uh, arriving at 42nd Street Station. That white spot you saw in the middle of the picture was a five lamp cluster lamp to illuminate the rear of a train in the station there so that the motorman of a following train would not uh, be likely to smash into it. There were no block signals on the local tracks on the 3rd Avenue L. The signals on the local tracks were only at interlockings where there were uh, switches and uh, turnouts. A southbound train of Q cars deadheading in the foreground, a northbound local of Manhattan L cars heading up toward 47th Street. Northbound Express passing the vicinity of the 53rd Street Station. A northbound local in the morning rush hour. Notice the checker taxi cabs from the uh, late 1940s and early 1950s. This is in the vicinity of 42nd Street. We look up and see a southbound local. Another southbound local heading south from 42nd Street Station. Most of the station houses along the 3rd Avenue L, particularly at local stations, were built in the 1870s and contain iron tracery fences uh, dating from that era, stained glass windows in the waiting room areas. The electric lights were installed later on, of course. But the chalet-type station houses with their stained glass windows were well known and well remarked during the uh, era of the 3rd Avenue L. And in those years there was very little vandalism. Here's a work train, the rubbish train, with the rubbish crew emptying the uh, ash cans and uh, trash cans into one of the trash cars. This usually took place uh, after the evening rush hour. Looking north toward the uh, 106th Street Station, a 
northbound local. Closer to Midtown, we have a local train here northbound at the 67th Street station. And on a ride on an express train, northbound in the evening rush hour, we pass several stations. 67th Street, 76th, there's 67th Street. This is at 90th Street with the uh, Rupert Brewery in the background. The red brick building there is the Rupert Brewery with its big plate glass windows facing 3rd Avenue. And from the L trains one could look down through the windows and see the big copper brewing tanks. North of 99th Street, we have a slum clearance project along 3rd Avenue. Old buildings were torn down to make way for high-rise apartment buildings. As the 3rd Avenue L was passing by with its trains every few minutes. There's a northbound express and a northbound local leaving 99th Street station. And in the background, a southbound local entering 99th Street. This is 99th Street Station up in the L level. This was different from most of the other stations because of the way the L structure was configured here. There were two additional storage track uh, trackways on the west side of the structure here. Uh, a leftover from the 99th Street yard which had already been closed. In that same general area we see a northbound local. And a northbound express. This train was probably a southbound through express which was deadheading back uptown on the local track after the morning rush hour. A northbound local in the morning rush hour or just after it. We continue our ride uptown past 76th Street Station. It was a steady upgrade from about 53rd Street to 84th Street. Then the L leveled off to 89th Street and then began a long downgrade through 99th Street and all the way to 106th. There's 89th Street Station and the Rupert Brewery again at 90th Street. You can see how we start downgrade here. We pass through the 99th Street station 
All the switches leading to the 99th Street Yard had been removed by this time. And we continued downgrade to 106th Street, which was the first Uptown Express stop. Again, a double deck station. And we ride the ramp up into the upper level of the 106th Street station. Past 106th Street, the next station was 116th, which was a local stop. And then we arrive at 125th Street, which was an express station with switches south of it and north of it. In the years when the 129th Street terminal and yard was still in use up until about 1950 or 51, uh, some local trains terminated at 125th Street and went into layup. Other local trains terminated at 129th Street and did not go into the Bronx. But by this time, most of the 129th Street complex had been torn away so that uh, most tr trains uh, headed from 125th Street through 129th without stopping and across the bridge into the Bronx. Here at 129th and 2nd Avenue was the bridge where the 2nd Avenue L had gone across and which the 3rd Avenue L was still going across to reach the Bronx. This is from Lexington Avenue and 129th Street, looking at a northbound local, which is heading across 129th Street for one long block. The station on the left there is the original 129th Street station of the 3rd Avenue L, built about 1878 when the L terminated there, before the uh, bridge was built across uh, the Harlem River in 1886 and the original bridge was only a single level bridge anyway. This appears to be 127th or 128th Street, showing the continuous upper level of the uh, express track north of 125th Street. Instead of ramping down to local level, north of 125th Street, the express trains remained on the upper level. Here's the 125th Street station from the street itself. You can see the upper level and a bus on Lexington Avenue just past northbound. The view from the front of a northbound express which has left 125th Street crossed over to 2nd Avenue above 129th Street and made the sharp turn onto the upper level of the bridge across the Harlem River. From the sidewalk of the 3rd Avenue Highway Bridge we look at the 2nd Avenue bridge, which was the elevated bridge, and we see a northbound express proceeding from Manhattan into the Bronx on the upper level. On the Bronx side was the Harlem River Yard of the New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad. And in the period 1953 to 55, the freight yards were still in use. Uh, there were team tracks. Freight was loaded and unloaded. Trucks came and went. And the 3rd Avenue L passed over all of this quite serenely with train service every day. That's a northbound local heading toward the 133rd Street Station. The hopper car with coal in it is on the two-track connection from the New Haven Yards to the 3rd Avenue L. At one time, this had passenger service as a shuttle into uh, the 129th Street Station, but that had been discontinued in 1924. The connection remained, however, to deliver coal and to remove ashes uh, from the uh, uh, IRT elevated. Since the stations were all heated by potbelly stoves, they did need a supply of coal right down to the end of service in 1955. And the coal was delivered to them by the uh, New Haven Railroad at its Harlem River Yards. This is looking out the back of a northbound local which has left 125th Street is making the sharp turn into 129th Street going from 3rd Avenue over to 2nd 
passing the remaining portion of the 129th Street station, which was closed at this time, making the sharp curve at Third Avenue onto the uh, at se the uh, at Second Avenue rather onto the bridge. You can see the stub of the Second Avenue L uh, directly in the background there, but the switches had already been removed. Now on the Bronx side, we proceed on the northbound local track, which was at a lower level from the express track. Cross over the New Haven's Harlem River Yard and proceed into the 133rd Street Station. The L operated on private right-of-way here between Willis Avenue and Alexander Avenue from 133rd Street to 143rd Street and here we are at the lower level of the 143rd Street station still going north you can see the truncated stub of the Bergen Avenue connection uh, which was built in 1916 uh, to collect the elevated at this point with the West Farms and White Plains Road line on Westchester Avenue that had been removed after 1950 from 143rd Street north the uh, uh, 3rd Avenue L swung out from the private right-of-way back onto 3rd Avenue itself, the Bronx portion this time, and we're riding a northbound local up toward 149th Street. The middle trackway at 149th Street had already been uh, uh, covered over by this time in anticipation of the uh, abandonment of the L south of this point. Here we are riding a southbound local back from 149th Street back to 143rd Street. A ramp from the lower level to the upper level south of 143rd Street Station had not been used for many years, but it was cleaned off and restored to service during the last year or so of L operation in order that the express trains which had to use the local tracks around 149th Street could get back to the uh, upper level south of 143rd Street and continue an operation as expresses downtown and in the reverse direction during the evening rush hour. This is arriving at the 138th Street station upper level from that ramp. For some time the upper level of the 143rd Street station was closed due to this operation. Now we're on the express level heading south over the New Haven Railroad's Harlem River Yards and we swing around in a big wide S-curve back onto the 2nd Avenue Bridge upper level and head into Manhattan. The switches had already been removed from this curve where the 2nd Avenue L had gone straight ahead and slightly to the left Instead, our train turns to the west over 129th Street for one long block to 3rd Avenue and then curves again back onto 3rd Avenue, remaining on the upper level into the 125th Street station. This is a good view of how the express level remained above the local level north of 125th Street. From the sidewalk of the elevated bridge at 2nd Avenue, we are looking toward 3rd Avenue with a northbound local coming from the 3rd Avenue L, turning into 129th Street, and coming toward us to go over the bridge into the Bronx. The 2nd Avenue L had gone down 2nd Avenue to the left out of the picture. The switches to the 2nd Avenue L had already been removed by the time this view was made. On the right is a southbound local, having just come off the bridge, is turning into 129th Street as our train proceeds past us. There were two public sidewalks on the L Bridge, one on each side with stairways at each end, so it was possible to stand there and watch trains or take movies of them. This is at the Bronx end of the same sidewalk on the L Bridge as a northbound express passes overhead. I'm sorry, as a northbound local passes overhead. This is taken from a landing on the stairway. Heads out over the New Haven Harlem River freight yards and swings around into the 133rd Street Station. 
there's an express of Q-type cars coming over the upper level of the bridge, entering the Bronx, and swinging across the New Haven yards, and heading into the upper level of the 133rd Street station. From the sidewalk of the Willis Avenue Highway Bridge, we see a northbound 3rd Avenue local crossing the New Haven's Harlem River Yards, having just come from the 2nd Avenue Bridge, and making its S-curve into the 133rd Street Station. And in the lower foreground is the connection to the New Haven Yards where the coal cars were brought in. There's the rubbish train again or possibly the car is being used for coal delivery. There's another full hopper car on the connection, having been delivered to the IRT from the uh, New Haven's Harlem River Yards. A similar scene from the Willis Avenue Bridge. The train crosses the Harlem River Freight Yards crosses 133rd Street and enters the 133rd Street Station, which was in the block between 133rd and 134th Streets. More views of trains on the double-deck elevated bridge between Manhattan and the Bronx over the Harlem River at 2nd Avenue. There you can see the stairway at the north end of the east side of the elevated bridge, which led to the sidewalk. A similar arrangement prevailed on the other side. The sidewalks were free and open to the public. This is on the Manhattan side now. That train has just come through the 129th Street station and is heading downtown. This appears to be 128th Street. From the Bronx side, we look at a northbound express of Q-type cars on Manhattan coming across 129th Street and turning onto the upper level of the bridge. That's probably a local express heading into the Bronx, crossing over the New Haven's freight yards, and going for the 133rd Street Station. This is from the front of a train, which is an express and which has left 125th Street, swung around the curve at 129th, is proceeding eastward on 129th Street, and will turn into the upper level of the bridge. Right at this tower, the single track became two tracks. You can see the stub of the cutoff portion of the 2nd Avenue elevated right there. Now we swing around the curve, head over the upper level of the bridge, over the river and into the Bronx. This was still a heavily industrial area at the time. There were piano factories here, there was an iron works here, there were various other factories and other industries in this area. It was also a densely populated residential area, hence the three express stations at 133rd, 138th, and 143rd Street, as well as at the hub of the Bronx, which was 149th Street and 3rd Avenue. 
On the far right there may be seen the Willis Avenue Highway Bridge from which some of the previous scenes were taken. Upper level at 133rd Street. And this time a view out the side of a train leaving 125th Street. It's a through express of cue cars going around the curve at 129th. You can see the truncated footbridge at 129th Street there. There was much more of that footbridge at one time. It extended way south to connect all of the platforms so that passengers could go from one platform to another while changing trains. Now we swing out over the Harlem River again, over the upper level of the bridge, back to the Bronx. From the express level we see a local train heading northward also. And since the three stations in the private right-of-way were both local and express stops, the locals and expresses more or less kept up with each other at, uh, in this portion of the L. 138th Street, as seen from the street, Here again, the station was in the block between 138th and 139th. Notice the 1955 Dodge and Plymouth taxi cabs indicating that this was early in 1955 during the last days of the 3rd Avenue L south of 149th Street. We continue to chase that local train as we look out the side of our express passing through the alley between Willis and Alexander Avenues the private right-of-way from 133rd to 143rd Street. We make our stop here at 143rd Street. There may be seen, oh, I'm sorry, that was 138th Street. The next stop is 143rd, which is this station. These views were taken while the upper level was still in use. And there is the stub of the dismantled Bergen Avenue connection on the right as our train swings out from 143rd Street to 144th Street comes out onto 3rd Avenue ramps down to the main elevated level and joins that local train on the local track. The local train has to wait however because switches have now been installed south of 149th Street so express trains can still use the express track and then swing into the local track to get around 149th Street Station. This view was taken before the 149th Street middle track was covered over and here's a northbound train uh, leaving 149th Street. On the right you saw the remaining stub of the Westchester Avenue connection uh, to the uh, West Farms White Plains Road line that had already been discontinued also. Right down to the last day there was through express service and uh, this is a through express because the local expresses operated as locals north of 149th Street. We pass through the 156th Street station Then the 3rd Avenue and its L make a wide S turn passing the Alexander Avenue Police Station 
and the old Bronx County Court building, which was used as the criminal courts building at this time. The other end of the S-curve is where 3rd Avenue joins St. Anne's Avenue, there on the right, at 161st Street, which was a local and local express station. Since we're riding a through express, we pass right through 161st Street without stopping. On the right, Boston Road turns off from 3rd Avenue as 3rd Avenue, as 3rd Avenue makes a slight turn to the left, heading northward toward Fordham. 166th Street Station. And coming up, 169th Street Station. The next station had the longest name of any station on the New York City transit system. Claremont Parkway between 171st and 172nd Streets, and all that appeared on the station sign, as you will see. Of course, most people just referred to it as Claremont Parkway Station. There's the station sign. Several of these were saved by rail fans. And there's a northbound through express passing through Claremont Parkway Station. Now we resume our ride. We are passing through Claremont Parkway Station and heading north. The large building on the right is Old Public School 2, which was long since demolished and uh, replaced by a new school building on the same site. This is 174th Street Station. Now we are looking north from Fordham Road Station, the middle track. A northbound through express, which has switched to the local track at 180th Street, making all stops north of there was heading north toward Gunhill Road. The station sign here read Fordham Road 190th Street, although to the best of my knowledge uh, neither Fordham Road nor any other street in this vicinity was ever called 190th Street. This is Fordham Square, or Fordham Plaza, as it's called, looking southwestward, southeastward from uh, 189th Street as the uh, local, south, southbound local swings out from Fordham Road Station and heads down the diagonal portion of the 3rd Avenue L toward 183rd Street. This southbound local is doing the same thing. The southbound local here is crossing 187th Street. North of Fordham Road, this train, seen through a telephoto lens, swings out over the New York Central Railroad to Webster Avenue, and in the foreground we may see the cutoff stub of the old Bronx Park Spur where many elevated trains terminate, and which was the northern terminal of the 3rd Avenue L from 1902 to 1920. It wasn't until 1920 that the Webster Avenue extension up to Gun Hill Road was completed. We are standing on the remaining portion of the old Bronx Park Station, and we were looking at the L on Webster Avenue. Now we're way up at uh, 210th Street, the Williamsbridge Station, just south of Gun Hill Road, 
also on Webster Avenue. These views were probably taken on a Saturday or a Sunday because from 1950 to 1955 there was neither nighttime nor weekend service on the 3rd Avenue L south of 149th Street. It was strictly a uh, five days a week, Monday to Friday affair, uh, but the uh, shuttle trains uh, from Gun Hill Road to 149th Street did operate uh, uh, nights and weekends. This is from the upper level or subway level of the 100 of the Gun Hill Road station. That uh, the lower level was the Third Avenue L terminal. It had not been a terminal, not been a terminal originally when Third Avenue L trains operated all the way up to uh, 238th and 241st streets. But in 1950 or 51, that was the L service was cut back to Gun Hill Road, so that the two. Uh, tracks on the lower level of Gun Hill Road Terminal became bi-directional and <clears throat> southbound trains could leave from either side. This southbound train is leaving from what had been the northbound track <clears throat> and is swinging over first to the middle track on Gun Hill Road as we head westward and then over to the proper southbound track At the Williams Bridge, 210th Street Station, we see the White Plains Road line across the Bronx River Valley at the rear. And now <clears throat> we have a southbound local coming from Gun Hill Road, swinging into Webster Avenue as it approaches the 210th Street Station. Parkside Avenue rises higher than the L itself at this point along the cliff just to the west of Webster Avenue and the previous scenes were taken from the summit of the street which you see on the left over there in this picture. This is 204th Street. You notice the trains of Q-type through expresses laid up there uh, in the middle track. The concrete roadbed was on the portion of the L crossing Marshallu Parkway in order to deaden the sound of elevated trains crossing the parkway. That had been specified by the Bronx Parks Commissioner when the Webster Avenue extension was built. <clears throat> That's the southbound side of the 204th Street Station, seen in between laid-up express trains on this Saturday or Sunday. Here we're looking north on the northbound platform at 204th Street. Now let's head back downtown again. There's a train deadheading downtown from the 133rd Street Station. It's a train of Q cars, so it's not allowed to carry passengers on the Manhattan portion of the L when riding on the local tracks. Those are trains which have left 133rd Street southbound and are swinging around the curves over the New Haven's Harlem River freight yards and heading back over the bridge over the Harlem River and into Manhattan. A southbound local crosses the bridge, swings into the Bronx and heads over the, a northbound local rather, swings over the bridge and around the curve into the Bronx. Now we're way downtown again. Uh, this is in the vicinity of Grand Street on the Bowery and Canal Street Station where some trains terminated and originated. And south of Canal Street we ride the uh, upper level to Chatham Square Station and we see the 
remaining parts of the three tracks that led to the City Hall branch, but which here were used only as layup tracks, since the City Hall branch had been cut off uh, right where the L crosses Park Row. We arrive at the upper level of the Chatham Square station, and ahead of us is an empty void where the L used to run. Here's Michael Quill's Transport Workers Union picketing the uh, L, picketing the New York City Transit System. There's Quill himself. Uh, due to the jobs which would be lost if the 3rd Avenue L were discontinued. The discontinuation was postponed many times, but the day of reckoning finally came on Thursday, May 12, 1955. These scenes were taken on that last day. There was a full schedule maintained right up through the evening rush hour, with the 6 p.m. northbound local being the final train. This is approaching Chatham Square on the train which will become the final train. I am somewhere in that huge crowd. I rode the front platform of the second car of the last train. The first car was reserved for the press and for officials. The person who took these films was looking out the rear window of the train, leaving Chatham Square Station. There were some stragglers left over who were unable to be accommodated so that a cleanup train had to be sent downtown, and we saw that in the last scene just before we fade out and bring the 3rd Avenue L to an end.